Hello and welcome to Ukrainian Toronto Television Podcast. My name is Melania Podryak, this is Mark Kaplan, and today this is here for a reason. We are going to talk about a conspiracy theory, which might not be a conspiracy theory, but very much a reality. Something that the US government strangely will not talk about. It's a thing and a problem that has influenced more than a thousand people, some of them even on American soil. And yeah, I mean, this is just for fun, but is it really? We are afraid. We are afraid because uh, American government really tries really hard to gaslight the the victims, and the victims are pretty much real. And uh, there are some developments in the in in the story. You might <clears throat> you probably heard of it um, called Havana Syndrome about American intelligence workers and diplomacy workers who've been attacked by a mysterious weapon. And uh, well, it's not fun. Uh, because it's probably up to a thousand, maybe one thousand and a half, uh, one thousand one, 1, five hundred people who were hurt by this mysterious weapon. Um, and just recently, um, journalists of 60 Minutes and uh, uh, the insider uh, Michael Weiss, by the way, who've been a guest on our program, and as well as uh, Christo Grozev and Der Spiegel uncovered that there is a Russian trace in it. And it's probably, despite what American government says to us, it's probably the coordinated attack by Russians towards American workers and American intelligence officers and American security officers. Um, yeah, how do you... Before how- we, yeah, before we even proceed talking about this, I'm just gonna say that this thing has existed for some time now. I mean, nobody really, you know, got deep into it, but, uh, all in all, after all considerations and investigative work done, it is apparent now that, uh, you know, Russia has something to do with it, which in 2024, the year we're currently in, should not be a surprise. I mean, since the very beginning of this issue and this conspiracy theory, which is, again, probably not a conspiracy theory, but very much reality, no, should anyone be even surprised at this point that, you know, Russians have anything to do with it? Like, you know, they have, they have, um, for the longest time said it might be China, North Korea, something, something. It was never Russia on the table. Why? I don't know. But the point do is, you, yeah, it happened. Do, do you, no, I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry. Do you still feel uh, like an idiot in this head? Uh, I feel it, like an it, idiot all the time. Yeah. You know, because <laughs> I can feel like an idiot even without this hat. And I'll tell yeah. you why. <laughs> Go ahead. It, it doesn't take the hat to feel like an absolute moron and an idiot uh, when something like this happens. So the story goes as, as follows. There was an attack. Uh, people felt really sick. While well, this thing was happening in my ear, and when I leaned forward, it kind of knocked, it didn't knock me over, but it knocked me forward. I immediately felt pressure, and pressure and pain started coursing from inside my right ear, down my jaw, down my neck, and into my chest. At the same time, uh, FBI agent Carrie told us the, the battery phone in her phone me. began to swell until it broke the case. Finally, she passed out on a couch. Because of chest pain, she was checked by a cardiologist and then returned to duty. And I remember complaining to my colleagues uh, for months after that, I felt like I had early Alzheimer's. Short-term memory, long-term memory, confusing memories, uh, multitasking. My baseline changed. I was not the same person. I immediately felt fullness in my head and just a piercing headache. And when I realized that I needed to get out of the laundry room, I left the room and went into our bedroom next door and projectile vomited in our bathroom. And uh, people across the world, um, across the different embassies, uh, and even in the United States, in the Capitolium, in, in the White House itself, felt the similar symptoms. And there was like this one thing in common among them is they all, they were all the uh, security or intelligence or diplomacy workers who were working on something related to Russia or something related to American uh, homeland security. And um, 
they all had the similar symptoms, similar symptoms. It was a huge story in the media, but American government and American uh, intelligence community were like, eh, it's probably nothing, right? Similar symptoms, some weapons. Um, journalists made some work and uncovered that there is, in fact, such weapons, which was even developed in the United States and in other countries, such as USSR, which uses microwaves to uh, attack human brain and can cause some brain damage. Um, so there is a weapon, there is a case of people getting hurt, but the American governments were supposed to like, hey, nothing to worry about. It's probably not a coordinated attack. So it's just just a coincidence. Nothing, absolutely nothing to worry about. So the way this kind of works, the way this kind of works is imagine a situation and what I'm about to, to uh, tell you is just a, uh, the reason why this seems like a coordinated attack and why it probably is, is because these situations happen the same way every time. You have a person who works for an American government in some country, sitting at home peacefully, not touching anyone, doing their thing. Uh, some of them were going home after a day of work and suddenly they hear this noise, which is some have described it as, you know, uh, like a marble going down a, a metal kind of bowl. Uh, some have described it as, you know, this like deafening high pitched sound. The point is they hear this noise and noise in and of itself apparently does not make it, uh, does not make you, uh, feel horrible it's not that the noises and there is a recording of that noise recorded by one of the um workers that has experienced this thing <laughs> nevertheless and then you still start feeling actual physical symptoms and some people have actually described it as they have felt as if something has pushed them or touched them or actually felt some sort of impact from you know their head and something and after that the symptoms were horrifying people lost their balance some of them had act one of the wives of the government official of the fbi agent who was exposed to that she actually did have some perforations in her eardrum which i find insane because those are actual physical manifestations of something happening to them she was medically evacuated and now doctors say she has holes in her inner ear canals, the vestibular system that creates the sense of balance. Two surgeries put metal plates in her skull. Another surgery is likely. It's devastating. It's just the, this fancy thing that American government has apparently learned called gaslighting, where people who suffered from those things and who have found each other because the symptoms were so eerily similar are being convinced that what they're feeling is not a does not have a common you know root that it's something that you know just happened randomly everywhere to the representatives of one field of profession the same thing in different it's, countries it's, it happened you can you can why not why not especially i don't know especially if there's something which happens, you know, like, uh, you know, when you have some brain damage or something like that, uh, which looks like that, usually all your, all, all your family has it, right? Children, children hear the same noise. Why your wife is uh, getting sick in similar fashion right um it's a, it all it's not it's not a coordinated attack but they what, even made up a name for it american government they they even call them anomalous health incidents anomalous so health incidents just, just so they, they acknowledge that they acknowledge yeah. that it's anomalous that it's not normal so uh i mean there's journalists uh, called Christo Grozyev who was one of the journalists who uh, found the uh, alleged killers, uh, assassinators who killed, uh, wanted to kill Alexei Navalny in 2018. Um, so they, at some point, they uncovered the whole uh, assassination, how, how do you call it, the assassination squad of Russian intelligence. They uncovered their documents, they uncovered their uh, um, tax returns, uh, all stuff like that, their addresses. And they know a lot about them. They know their phones um, and all this stuff. And so what these people did, they tried to trace 
these attack, these occurrence of anomalous health incidents with what these death squads of Russian intelligence uh, did and where they traveled and what they did. And what they found was extremely, I don't know, <laughs> it was extremely obvious and at the same time raised a lot of questions. I'm going to tell it to you just like on one case that happened in Tbilisi uh, in the middle of the COVID-19 lockdown. Uh, there was a Justice Department attache in the U.S. Embassy in Georgia. Uh, him and his wife were there. And uh, one day she felt these horrible, horrible symptoms, this, this noise, the la loss of balance, ac this acute ringing sound and... It, it reminded her of something akin to a bomb going off near her. She actually like projectile vomited everywhere. But while she was experiencing that, she actually managed to call her husband. Uh, and she was able to, they checked the security camera at their house and to see if anybody was outside. And there was a Mercedes crossover parked at their house, the car that they never saw before. And she saw a man. And she raised her phone to photograph him. And a couple of years later, she was shown a photograph of a Russian operative called Ar Albert Avelyanov, uh, a part of a known and notorious unit 29155. And she recognized him as a person who was at her doorstep. Now, this department, 29155, is very interesting because for some reason... N not many like intelligence agencies did not pay attention to them. I guess they're very obscure, you know, some radio electronic crap, whatever. But so this guy, he, uh, was only 23 years old when, uh, he, uh, when, when, when this thing happened, but he is the son of a founding commander of the unit 29155. His name is General Andrea Vryanov and who was actually in charge of running Russian foreign policy in Africa. So a very influential general in uh, the main, uh, uh, you know, special service in Russia. And his son, just by some weird coincidence, was standing outside an, a Russian uh, attache's house in Georgia while she was experiencing symptoms that were related to some other symptoms of that kind in other countries to other American government officials. Does that sound like a, what is it, random, unspecified, uh, yeah, that's just anomalous incident, health Tanya. incident? Stop, yeah. stop with your nonsense, you know. Yeah, with my stop this. Some of that malarkey. It's just a coincidence. A Russian death squad just appeared places and at the time where Americans are getting attacked, but not attacked, but having anomalous health issues, which are consistent yeah. across the globe. Well, and also you might there is say, a weapon, well, but not. Yeah. Well, Some nah. people might say that, you know, this unit is one of many units in the GRU. One of many. There are thousands of them. It might, he might have done something else. Maybe he was putting a bomb there. You know, maybe he wasn't using the so-called non-lethal acoustic weapon. Well, funnily, uh, the workers, the operatives at the unit 29155 were awarded, received awards. And that's supported by the documentation that Christo Hrozev has found. They have received state awards for the development of non-lethal acoustic weapons. Isn't that a funny coincidence, Mark? Isn't it? I, I think know. there's zero, none, zero connections. That's not, it's not even close to the evidence, right? Um, no. Because when, well, something like that happens, right? You want, you want some evidence. Uh, and um, it's not, it's not. <laughs> what, what would be evidence is that if this guy uh, would be caught on tape, for instance, while the attack, what, at time, the time of the attack, caught on tape, calling someone, for instance, and uh, talking about having this attack, talk, talking about using some equipment. Didn't something like that happen? 
Actually, Probably. it did. It did. Oh, there are recordings of, of phone calls it. made at the same time and at the same address where the attack has occurred, where a person on the phone is asking another person on the phone in Russian language uh, things like, should I leave it on the entire time? And should the green light flicker? So like, obviously, I don't know, maybe he's talking about a traffic light or something. I don't know that they, obviously not. The point is, yes. So there are documentation to support this theory. There is document, there is actual vo voice recordings of a phone conversation at the time and the place of the attack. There is a special department, a special unit with, you know, this exact kind of workforce that do these things. But, but if, if this is still some kind of coincidence for you, let me tell you what I referred to at the beginning that some people believe that, you know, it's called Havana syndrome because it happened in Havana. No, no. There were two attacks of that sort, uh, two years earlier before Havana in Frankfurt. Uh, so a U.S. government employee was stationed there uh, and he was diagnosed with a traumatic brain injury of that sort. And funnily, he was able to identify a person, which later on, it was, it was found out that he was an operative at a Geneva-based Unit 29155. <sighs> Again, <gasps> can you imagine? No, nah, it's, it's impossible. It's, and it's, the, this is just like a one teeny tiny glimpse of what these things, how they work, if and only, how it looks like. If only, if only American intelligence, which gets dozens of billions of dollars in um, in budgets every year had the same capabilities as Christo Grozev <laughs> and could uncover this stuff. It would be just to me. Imagine the world we, we would have if, um, if they had these capabilities, like, you know, phone records or, um, I don't know, some... <laughs> do you want Jesus. me to really blow your mind for a second? Let's do so, it. The unit 29155. Uh, should, should, yeah. should I be prepared? Should I do I need some of this? Uh, no, like it's not going to help you because, mm -hmm. well, another thing that the, this infamous unit is known for uh, three members of this unit, Colonel Alexander Mishkin, Colonel Antoris Chepiha, and Major General Denis Sergeyev, are the same people who are responsible for poisoning. Uh, uh, the Skripal family. Yeah. So the, in, the infamous, in, in London, famous in, in double Salisbury. agents. Uh, yeah. In Salisbury. Hmm. hmm. So hmm. Uh, let's do a really, Mark, I let's mean, do a really big thing. Yeah. yeah. We're like, uh, take, take I'm a doing lot a really big thing. And, uh, and uh, a huge, like, hmm. <gasps> hmm. Yeah. No, the point is, so we can keep on clowning about this forever. And you can sense the let's annoyance. let's see the response of the United States government. Um, I want to see the response of the United States government because, like, these are huge. These are huge. I mean, it's an attack. It's it, it happened in the United States soil. We didn't talk about it, but there is a lot about it in the investigation. It happened in in Washington. This it happened near it happened the Capitol building. It yeah. happened near the where this and 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 according to a one of the. Middle, I would want to say junior, uh, officials, uh, um, responsible for the security matters and homeland security issues has said publicly in the 60 minutes interview that a senior member of the Biden Harris delegation was also affected in a similar way while they were traveling. And another person, a senior officer that she actually gave her statement on 60 minutes also, said that she felt this attack happened to her while she was leaving her workplace, like, you know, in the place where it should be most safe. She was actually walking from her office to her car, parked. And she is a senior government official responsible for homeland security. And, and so this is not something that you know you just sit in the bench in the park and something happens to you <sighs> let's 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 put it again so 
thousands of American officials, often working uh, on Russia, often working on China or other uh, very like sensitive um, American security, national security stories, are getting the same symptoms, are getting kind of uh, attacked by some mysterious weapon, which actually, uh, re like, we know there is such weapon which can attack like that. So it's like, if you got shot by a gun, you know the gun exists. So we know this weapon exists. Um, got, got attacked. Uh, their children got hurt. Uh, a lot of people really lost their ability to work, uh, got some permanent health damage. Um, they got attacked on American soil. The, all the symptoms uh, are pretty much similar to one another. Uh, pretty much uh, fit in the same narrative. No, don't say pretty much. They're the same. Yeah, yeah. They're the in, same fit, symptoms. People fit, lose fit balance, in. vomit, hear noise, uh, feel like crap. Yeah. And their short-term memory is, and long-term memory is which irreversibly is symptoms damaged. of attack by a web microwave weapon. Um, we know this weapon exists. We know Russians have it and a lot of other countries have it. And we know Russians do attack... Um, different officials uh, on other soil, country soil. And um, we now also now know that uh, Russian GRU unit, which is so, like, which is uh, like the, the murder squad of GRU, which is murder squad of Russian intelligence, travels and been caught uh, and been caught on tape in the same places where these attacks happen. Which what United States government thinks of it? Well, they <laughs> think it's also hilarious. I love this. This is the most bureaucratic sentence. The most, it's like gaslighting wrapped in bureaucracy. I love it. It goes as follows. The final assessment has found that these uh, anomalous health incidents are a unique combination of core characteristics that cannot be explained by known environmental or medical conditions and could be due to external stimuli. And then uh, in March 2023, uh, the Office of the Director of National Intelligence issued a redacted report stating that it was very unlikely that these uh, symptoms and these illnesses were caused by a foreign adversary. By the way, there was a report that Biden in 2021 on Geneva conference with Putin when he was asking Putin not to attack Ukraine successfully, um, where he asked Putin to stop these attacks. But at the same time, Putin did not do them. But Biden and Biden knows that. But Biden asked anyway, right? Biden knows it's not Putin. Biden asked him to do that. As, so uh, the problem with that, the problem with that is not that Russia is bad. We know it. Yeah, it's knows not this. a secret. Every person on this planet at this point knows Russia is bad. And it's not about, you know, being incapable of doing something. It's the problem that arises because, well, first of all, at least I guess every single uh, American agent and American, uh, national security specialist and worker feels kind of very left alone in this situation and unsafe because they, I guess, feel that, you know, whatever they think is true, whatever's happening to them is being disregarded as something that doesn't exist, which I think feels probably horrible. Now it but means problem, Russia just can't attack American officials. Exactly. The main issue, and I think uh, it was stated, um, it was stated in the 60 Minutes interview, that if you acknowledge the fact that Russians are able to attack American officials on American soil and influence them in a physical way and actually uh, make them uh, bodily harm, uh, that would probably mean and that probably is, on a some level, an act of war. It's a foreign government, a adversary of said country, attacking government officials of another country on their soil. And by the way, to all the naysayers and critics, uh, they don't discriminate. They attack people on both sides of the pond. So if there are some, you know, very uh, kind of... Uh, 
you know, if there is a person who thinks, well, Trump is Putin's friend or they Trump will make this go away. No, they attacked Trump wrong. officials much yes, more than because Obama's officials. They Obama's actually attacked Biden. happily people that were loyal for to President Trump and they were working for Absolutely. him. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So this is not about helping Trump win elections. And this actually should be a kind of a you know, food for thought, for, because this is the kind of story that, you know, that, that, that the people on that side of the pond love, because it sounds like a conspiracy theory, you know, like chemtrails. But the thing is, it's the reality and it's the people they rely on. They are getting attacked. But you think, you, 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 you would think that, okay, the story actually looks like some kind of weakness for current government right it's not it's not it's not looking good to them uh and you would think that okay if uh, there was an opponent of such government um like trump or trump's allies they would criticize that right they would call for some congressional hearing to hear from the cia what why did why don't they um why why don't they uh i don't know find the the reasons of attacks of to americans uh, to american um officers uh well what do you think trump party uh <laughs> feels like it's a hoax trump party is on the side of government jd vance who is one of the closest trump allies says feels like a lot of journalists have lost their minds commenting on this investigation not commenting like just lost their minds found some something but uh, you know um yeah, and uh, just joking about Putler and uh, things like that. Ha ha ha! It's a Russia hoax, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, um, why would you think <laughs> the guys on the other side of the aisle, who are benefiting of every governmental loss, and th this is not good. This just doesn't look good. Yeah, this doesn't look good. S and just side with <laughs> side with everything against. This. Side with Russia is like, they couldn't have. It's not Russia. <laughs> the, Why? the thing is that it's not even, it's not even, a, it's, it's about that also, but it's the ease with which Russian agents and Russian, uh, you know, adversaries get access to these people on every, at every single corner of the planet. I don't need to remind you, but the same person, the same agent who was, uh, trying to harm people with that weapon allegedly was caught by American police and some documents were taken away from him and some equipment of unknown origin was taken away from him. He served his prison term in America. Before that, he was actually pretending to be a chef. And it's very important. These things are important to talk about. So he was, uh, he was, working for Russian security services, special services, and then he quit to become a chef. And then he went to America to work at the Russian restaurant. He was even on American TV posing as a chef. And then he was caught by the police with all that stuff. He was, he served his time in American prison. He was sent to Russia, even though he was told by the American official and by the FBI that probably he will be liquidized then there. He left. He went there and a couple of, uh, sometime later, a couple of months later, he is actually, uh, pronounced dead because he was sent to fight in Russia Ukraine war in Luhansk region. And so we don't know whether that's a cover up or where they, r did they really send him, uh, to the war to get rid of him? And Christo Hrozev believes that firmly. I don't know. The point is that this guy probably will never get back to American officials to investigate more. But what did happen was the same FBI agent who was working with him, who was asking him, who was questioning him, and who had all the information that she could get from him at that time when he was actually planning, after he planned and probably did this attack, she actually fell victim to the same weapon. This, this is, this is insane. So she, the person who was in contact with former JRU operative who was held, uh, hot, who was actually captured with all these things, who was seen and who is connected to other cases in this situation, she was one of the victims after the fact. And the crazier part of that is that you know how American governmental agencies are very, 
not keen on talking about these people. Well, the FBI actually let this woman, let their agent go on national television to talk about this. This is what I was thinking the entire time I was watching it. It's one of the clo more closed, one of the more, if you say, uncooperative with the media agency in America, the FBI. They actually let their own agent go on TV and tell this story, which to me sounds Probably, like the FBI yeah. is trying to protect their personnel the best way they can. And in this case, and they think publicity is the nicest way to do it because they cannot do it within their own agency, which yeah, I yeah, find because, because, because really probably disturbing. They, they're also like, even the FBI is tired of this gaslighting. Yes. And then, and then, and then, then CIA director William Burns comes to TV and says, you know what? We haven't found anything so it's the fbi impossible. is like listen you go tell them because this is insane and then another thing that is very interesting is that yeah i i guess it's all politics which does not make it better or does not make it you know good in any way shape or form but even john bolton himself on tv said well we cannot acknowledge certain things because it would mean doing certain steps which we're trying to avoid and not do which sounds horrifying to me. Uh, yeah, because, no. Because, yeah, you have to make adult decisions when the agents of a foreign country are trying to harm your citizens that also happen to be the, uh, you know, servants of, of your country that have to do with national security. I don't know. Yeah, that's, that's, it's probably should be, a, I don't know, it's maybe maybe because it's election year, year but it probably should be a greater... Um, greater issue, uh, for some reason, but it's not. Um, and, uh, yeah, uh, if you think that like things like Russian war in Ukraine happened just by, like, I don't know. Because of NATO chance. expansion. Yeah. yeah. No, sure. It happened, it happened because, sure. because the United States didn't react to the things like this. Yeah. It doesn't mean that you can't do anything with it. It means something can be still done if somebody pays attention to what Ukrainians have been yelling about for two years now and even actually maybe 10 years. The point is, uh, yeah, uh, please do something. Help. Share <laughs> please information. Help. Share. Yes. Like, yeah, share, share this video. Like, please like leave. Like like, subscribe to our comments, channel, like, like to our send channel. us money, do everything possible. Just <laughs> yeah, we are, we, we, it's, it's not for us, it's for you guys. We are trying, we're doing our best. We're doing God's work here. Um, so we yeah. are we're trying gradually to losing our minds. I don't know what this channel is going to be like in a couple of months, but I guess this is I know. the, the I know. thing we're going to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, guys, thank you. Please leave your comments downstairs uh, in the comments. Tell us about what you think about this. And yeah. uh, hopefully we'll see you next week. <laughs> yeah, and nobody will attack. Oh, oh God, oh God, there's some van outside. Okay, thank you very much. Bye, I have to run.